Within amino acids, we have a central alpha carbon, a hydrogen, a carboxyl group, an amino group, and an R group. Now, what's important to note is that in this general structure of an amino acid, we have four different substituents. And this R group is what is different for all 20 of the amino acids. So this part of the amino acid structure is the same for all amino acids, and we just differ in R groups. Now, as I mentioned, what's important to note here is that the alpha carbon has four different uh, substituents. It has four different types of molecules or atoms bound to it. And we know that whenever we have an atom or a molecule with four different substituents, we can have chirality, meaning that we can produce a mirror image of this molecule. So what would that mirror image look like? We would have that central alpha carbon. We would still have that carboxyl group up here. And we would have our R group, but the positions for the amino group and the hydrogen have switched places. And we can see that these two, if we superimposed uh, them onto one another, so if I took this molecule di directly as, is, as it is and I placed it on top, the hydrogen would not align with the hydrogen and the amino group would not align with the other amino group because they are mirror images of one another. And why are we getting mirror images? Because there is chirality exhibited in this general structure of an amino acid around the alpha carbon. So because this alpha carbon has for different substituents, we, we exhibit chirality and we get mirror images. And these mirror images are referred to as enantiomers. And enantiomers essentially means non-superimposable mirror images. Non-superimposable means that if I pick this molecule up as it is and I place it on top of this molecule, the molecules will not align directly with one another. Now, when we want to designate the mirror images, we designate them through the L and D system, which is known as Fisher's Convention. So within biochemistry and chemistry, it is often discussed that L and D refers to how the molecule rotates plane polarized light. So when we talk about chiral molecules, they are optically active. Optically active just means that if there is a plane polarized light, it will be rotated in the presence of a chiral molecule. If the light is rotated to the left, we say levorotary. If it's rotated to the right, we say dextrorotary. But within biochemistry, when we talk about L and D, we refer to Fisher's convention. We do not refer to the optical activity of amino acids. We refer to the convention, which Fisher defines as, as the absolute configuration of the substituents around the alpha carbon. So essentially, we are not concerned with how the light is being rotated. We are just looking for the absolute configuration. And in order to determine the configuration, the absolute configuration of amino acids, Fisher compared or determined the absolute configuration through glyceraldehyde. So glyceraldehyde uh, was known to what was known to rotate that plane polarized light. And Fisher proposed that the reason why there were different rotations depending on the glyceraldehyde molecule was because of the orientation of the substituents. So we can note over here that this CHO group is on top for both. 
the CH2OH group is on the bottom for both, and we defer in the OH and hydrogen, just how we deferred over here. Now, if the OH group is on the left, Fischer designated that as L. So it's L-glyceride, it's levorotary. If the OH group is on the right, it is dextrorotary, so D-glyceraldehyde. Remember, we are not concerned with plain polarized light. We, we are just using the absolute configuration proposed by Fischer in which he designated um, L to refer to OH on the left and D to refer to OH on the right. Now, if we compare that to amino acids, we do a very similar thing. We arrange the COO- on top instead of the CHO, and we are changing the orientation of the amino group and the hydrogen. So when the amino group is on the left, it is levo, and when the amino group is on the right, it is dextro. So the DNL system is essentially based on L-glyceraldehyde and D-glyceraldehyde. This was determined by Fisher, and we use this convention to designate um, the absolute configuration of amino acids. So this configuration will be common amongst all amino acids. And what is interesting is that within our biological systems, 99% of the time, our amino acids will be L amino acids, not D amino acids. Now, we know that in a chemistry lab, if we are, if we are um, doing an experiment where we yield enantiomers, we will get a general 50-50 mix of both stereoisomers. And those stereoisomers within a solution can be very hard to distinguish. But within our biological systems, it is essential, it is extremely vital that the stereochemistry is the same amongst different amino acids in order to, to gain stability within our biological systems. So essentially, our biological systems are able to recognize the L and D. And L and D is very, very different in our biological systems. So within biochemistry, 99% of the time, all our amino acids will be L amino acids. That is what is found within our biological systems. Now, what's important to note is that all of our amino acids, all 20, all 19 of our amino acids will have this chirality, but glycine will not have, will not exhibit chirality. And we'll see why in a second. Now, another important aspect of orientation, uh, orientation of amino acids is cis and trans bonds. Over here, we can see that we have two carbon molecules that are double bound, and each of the carbons has a hydrogen. Now, if the hydrogen is on opposite sides, so if this carbon has it on this side and this carbon has it on this side, we refer to this as trans configuration, meaning they are on opposite sides. But if the hydrogens are on the same side about the double bond, then we refer to that as cis, which means same side. This is also important amongst amino acids because amino acids are stereospecific. So certain enzymes will only be able to bind molecules that are trans, whereas some molecules may only uh, be able to bind other molecules that are cis. So within our biological, biological systems, amino acids are stereospecific, which means uh, there is specificity in terms of whether a bond is trans or cis, along with whether it is L or D configuration. So these are the two different types of configurations we have to be aware of and we have to know because it is very important in our biological systems because they are sensitive to configuration. Now the last thing to mention 
is that, as I mentioned earlier, all 19 of our amino acids have chiral centers. So they have that L and D configuration, except for glycine. Glycine does not have a chiral center because within glycine, remember we have that central alpha carbon, we have a hydrogen, we have a carboxyl group, the amino group, and we have an R group. But in glycine, that R group is a hydrogen. So we can see now that we do not have four different substituents because we have two hydrogens. Now, if we don't have four different substituents, we do not have a chiral center. So we do not have LND configuration, we do not have enantiomers, we do not have uh, mirror images of this molecule. So out of the 20 amino acids we have to know in biochemistry, glycine does not exhibit chirality, but the other 19 do. Now what's also important to note is that we have two amino acids, threonine and iso leucine and both of these molecules these are the only two amino acids that have two chiral centers instead of one before we were always referring to the alpha carbon now all 19 of the amino acids have a chiral center around the alpha carbon but threonine and isoleucine have a chiral center in their r groups so threonine, this is the R group over here. Remember, this is just the general structure of amino acid, which is same for all amino acids. They differ in their R groups. So the R group over here, we have a central carbon, which has four different substituents. And since it has four different substituents, this carbon will also exhibit chirality. Same over here. In the R group of isoleucine, the central carbon over here has four different substituents, so it will also exhibit chirality. So threonine and isoleucine are the two amino acids that have two chiral centers, glycine has no chiral center, and all 19 of our amino acids will have a chiral center around that alpha carbon.